A lot of the techniques I'm showing in this series of videos have to do with casting materials. I cast molds to do warm glass, I cast combinations of glass and binders, and I cast plaster and rubber masters. Doing all of, these, of this casting, the best tool I have is a shaker table. Take a look at this mold. The, the walls are about 3 16 of an inch thick. In general, the thinner the mold, the better, because thinner molds react faster to changing kiln temperatures, suck up less of your expensive kiln heat, and thermal shock less than thick molds. Also, with castables, as with clay, you want to use as little water as possible to do the job. A shaker table is the only way I know to get thixotropic materials to flow into narrow spaces. Take a look at this. I put a thick mixture of cement and grog onto a mold and turn the shaker table on. I have to level the mixture a little, but within 30 seconds I have a f It's really easy to make a shaker table. I got a piece of Formica countertop and put two by four legs down to a piece of plywood. At each corner, I put a vibration isolator to isolate the top from the rest of the structure. You can buy vibration isolators from Amazon.com. I clamped the whole thing to a Black & Decker portable bench. Very importantly, when I clamped it down, I also shimmed it to level the top. If the top isn't level, the mixture won't end up level when it vibrates. Now here's the big part. I built two of these shaker tables. For one, I got a half horse motor from an old clothes dryer, drilled a hole in the pulley, and put a bolt and a number of nuts in the pulley to create an eccentric. That means you're creating an artificial vibration. For this one, I found a small compressor for sale cheap at a second hand store. The compressor motor is directly attached to a piston. By bolting the motor with the piston hanging off one end to the bottom of the tabletop, I set up a really nice vibration. I did a more extensive instruction sheet years ago for an organization I worked for. Here's the link.